Hi everyone, this is Katie Groves, co-present with Kayvon here. And in this video, we are going to be talking about what it has been like so far for us in speaking out about satanic ritual abuse and monarch mind control as a queer trans non-binary politically left-minded non-Christian. This has been one of the hardest experiences of my life, even though what I went through in MK itself was incomprehensibly more painful than anything that I've actually had to face outside of it. But speaking out like this, as the person that I am, it has been uniquely challenging in ways that I think cause it to stand alone as, like I said, one of the most difficult experiences that I have ever had. It has also been one of the most rewarding. And so in this video, I'm going to be talking about the pain and also the beauty of what I've done and continue to do every day. So to those of you who have never heard me say these things before, who are new to my channel, especially to those of you who are Christians, and may not understand how I could have the perspective I do and the experience I have with sexuality and gender and politics and religion and all that, I would like to direct you towards my video called How to Be a Christian Ally to Satanic Ritual Abuse and Mind Control Survivors. I'm going to put a link to that in the description below. In that video, I talk about a lot of things that I think may be useful for you in understanding where I come from and possibly in understanding how to be more supportive towards me and other survivors. But to those of you who are familiar, I'm going to go on talking here and I'm going to talk about what this experience has been like. So I grew up in Texas where I wasn't just subjected to satanic ritual abuse and trauma-based mind control programming but I was subjected to the overall prejudices of that area. I grew up in Austin, and despite what many people think of Austin, it is still Texas, and there is still a lot of abuse down there towards people of various minority groups. And one of those groups includes the LGBT community. Growing up, I knew from an extremely young age that I was queer and that I did not identify as female. I didn't feel like I was either gender, and I knew that I didn't just like boys, I liked girls too. As young as elementary school, I knew these things. And as young as two years old, I showed signs of gender dysphoria. So for me, my wounds around all this go deep with homophobia and transphobia. Even though I was an RAMC, I did not grow up completely isolated from the mainstream. And in Texas, growing up queer and trans, is just a difficult thing. During that time, I planned my escape. I started planning really hardcore around the age of seven, but at four, I had a realization that led me to know that I was going to get out and I had some really strong ideas of how. And while planning my escape, I knew that I was not going to cease to be queer and trans when I got out. And I knew that I would speak out publicly. And I knew that I would endure abuse from the same kinds of people who had targeted me in my childhood with their bigotry and nonsense. And I knew that I was going to have to deal with a lot of pain that I didn't want to deal with, that I really shouldn't have to deal with as an outspoken survivor. But I knew that I was going to speak out anyway, and as I got older, I became increasingly conscious of just what it was going to take for me to speak out about this stuff as the person I am, from the perspective I have, and to try to engage people on the Christian right who would not want to support anything that I had to say or do as an LGBT human being. 
But as I got older, I got exposed to internet culture and I got exposed to the truth community, to the conspiracy theory community. I was actually used to infiltrate the conspiracy theory community on sites like 4chan as a teenager and I um I know some things about the tactics that the CIA uses within the truth community as a result of that. And I know some things about the beliefs that people in the truth community end up holding as a result of manipulation done by CIAs and sleeper cells like the sleeper cell that I once was. So, as I got older, I really came to see just how much confusion there was in the truth community and just how directionless a lot of people in the Christian right really were. And I started to see that while it was going to be very challenging speaking out to such an audience, I also saw that there were people who didn't necessarily believe the things they were saying about people like myself, but were really just lost and confused and angry and looking for looking for black and white ways of seeing things that would bring them comfort and relief for their cognitive dissonance. And while I knew that I was not going to come out of Monarch and try to manipulate those people. I knew that I was going to come out of Monarch and that I was going to have a somewhat easier time addressing people in these communities because there were going to be many of them who did not believe so strongly what they claimed to about people like myself, but who, like I said, were just lost and looking for some way to ease their pain. And so I knew that while I wasn't going to try to manipulate people, I was going to have an opportunity to shine a light and to speak my truths, and there were people, there were going to be people, I mean to say, who would hear me. And that gave me a lot of courage. By the time I was 16 or 17, I was pretty grounded in the fact that I was going to be able to speak my truths, and there were going to be some people on the Christian right who would be receptive enough, despite perhaps looking abusive on the surface, and that they would actually take in some of what I was saying, and possibly become allies to my community. And so that really eased up a lot of my fear around speaking out. So when I realized how directionless a lot of people were, I realized that not everybody who seemed to be against me really was. So when I actually went to speak out last year, it's been almost exactly a year since I started speaking, I had all of this in mind, all of the years I spent being targeted for my LGBT status and my perspective, and all of the things that I learned about people who targeted people like me, and all of the things that I learned about the truth community, and how to possibly speak to them in a way that they would receive, as in those in the truth community who were very against the type of person I am. And armed with all of that understanding, that knowledge and experience, I realized that what I was going to have to do was be unapologetically myself while trying to keep the main focus of what I say on child trafficking, racial abuse, and mind control, and not LGBT issues and left-wing politics itself. And I put everything I had into strategizing about how to open-heartedly be myself and at the same time not be too triggering to people on the right who would not be able to receive what I said if I focused too much on my identity. And as challenging as this has been, I have put myself into it, and I can honestly say that I think I have successfully been openly queer and openly trans and openly left-wing and openly non-Christian and still managed to reach some people 
on the Christian right about the bigger issues of child trafficking and RAMC. And so for those of you who are on the right and who are Christians and who are watching this now, I want you to know that in no way have I attempted to manipulate you, but I have poured myself into being myself and yet at the same time being someone that you can hear. And so I hope that you know that I appreciate all of you who have ended up listening to me as a result of this and all of you who have had to work hard to listen to what I say because I did trigger you by being myself in these ways. I know that some of you have struggled to receive my words about REMC because of how I identify and how I see certain things. And I want you to know that in no way do I mean to patronize you in this video. I just sincerely want to thank you for the work that you have put in to receiving me, even though it may have been challenging. I, um, I want to say that I have not expected people to see things the way that I do. Altogether, I have wanted people to see things in certain ways that I do, but I have put a lot of efforts also into not trying to convince people to see things less politically conservatively and into being more friendly towards the LGBT community. I have tried to help people have a more healthy perspective on certain things, but I have not tried to actually turn homophobes into allies and to actually turn people who are extremely, extremely religious into people who will ever see things actually the way that I do. But I have put myself into trying to help people to see things from a less violent perspective. I've encountered people on the Christian right who have been extremely violent towards me in comments and in emails. And I have put a lot of effort into just being a bright enough light that maybe I can help, help heal some of what's causing that in such people. But I have put a tremendous amount of effort into not trying to convince people to see things my way. That doesn't mean that I have altogether done that perfectly, but I have put a tremendous amount of effort. And I've certainly tried not to be underhanded in any way and manipulative, using the kinds of manipulative techniques that I learned when I was a programmer. Because I want to be perfectly honest with you guys. When I see people who see things extremely differently than me, I have an automatic reaction to want to try to convince them to see things my way, and I was taught so many tactics for doing that as a mind control programmer that I have a hard time holding myself back sometimes and not using underhanded techniques that I know might get me my way temporarily, but would just backfire and cause suffering in the end. I've learned that there's no way to actually get people to see things your way through brainwashing. And so I just want y'all to know that I was trained as an expert brainwasher and I have put everything I have into not trying to brainwash people who I find threatening who see things differently than me. I have been accused by people, mostly trolls and shills, if not entirely, of being manipulative on my channel. And I just really, really want to convey how hard I've worked not to use those kinds of tactics and to just honestly speak my truth but strategically, so that I'm at least not triggering people's trauma in ways I know would make it hard for them to hear what I'm saying. So that all being said, this has been difficult. This has been very difficult. I am an easily triggered and very traumatized person. And I have put myself into trying to engage a community that generally does not support my very existence about dealing with hardcore issues like child trafficking. And while I have not done it perfectly, I've given it my best. And honestly, I want to thank people, thank people who have been, who've been understanding. It's pretty much a full-time job, to be honest, moderating my comment sections. And I just want to thank people who understand that I'm not perfect and I can't do this perfectly. 
The last thing I want to say for this video is that to any survivors who want to speak out about this stuff, who are not conservative Christians, heterosexual and cisgender, I know that some of you are truly intimidated to speak out, and you may have become even more intimidated to speak out because of the violence you saw members of the Christian right perpetrating in my comment sections. I would like you to know that while it is very challenging to deal with this, and I completely respect if you do not feel capable, that there are people who are in those demographics and people in all kinds of other demographics who are supportive. I know it can be hard to see that if you feel threatened and afraid because PTSD tells the brain to focus on threat and minimize everything else in one's mind. But there is love waiting for you if you want to speak out, if you feel able and try. And there are people who will surprise you, who may not see things from your perspective, but who will still show you kindness anyway. And it will be humbling and it will be enlightening and it will open your heart, and you will see more good happen than bad, I promise. Thank you.